Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome to A First Impressions. But before I get into this, let me say Happy New Year, and I hope you haven't been waiting too long for a video. I've been on vacation for a few days, and I thought I should try something new, something bold, something different. And so I decided to look at free BSD. Now before I get into my review, I want to tell you, first I installed free, free BSD on a separate laptop, got it running, working, blew it up a few times, got it running, working, blew it up again, got it running and working. <laughs> Learned a lot. You know, you don't learn much when everything goes really smoothly, but you learn a lot when stuff breaks and you got to try to figure out how to fix it. I am doing this review, however, on my Gen 2 laptop with FreeBSD rebuilt in VirtualBox. The reason why I'm doing that is because no matter what I tried within FreeBSD, I just could not get a good recording. I got GDK record my desktop working. I got the webcam working. I got a lot of things working very well. However, every time I would record with record my desktop, I would end up with terrible audio synchronization. And while it might not be so bad that I can get rid of my ugly mug there so you don't have to look at me, it is a pain. By the end of the video, the sound was off by about 40 seconds, which really made it difficult to try to follow on screen what I was talking about. So, since most of what I want to talk about doesn't require the audio and video and all the rest, I'm going to just go ahead and go into full screen with this version in VirtualBox and begin my discussion. So without further ado, let's get started. Free BSD. From the look and feel, I am very impressed. Right now, we are sporting Linux, well, I'm sorry, we are sporting Mate desktop, and we are running with a bare bones set of tools. As you can see in our applications, we just have a few things. I was trying to use Cheese, I, like I said, I actually got my uh, webcam working within VirtualBox as well, and I thought maybe I could just do this all within the VirtualBox. But with Cheese, it would give me a picture, it kind of flak, flake out, and then kind of just disappear. I also tried PWC View, and that pretty much did the same thing. I just got a lot of artifacts. So I decided to go this route instead. We've gone ahead and installed, of course, the GIMP and Firefox. And um, there were a few things I needed to do with the user settings and and all that I just kind of threw on a little bit of bare bones KDE there. Of course, LibreOffice and uh, Audacity to try out sound, some sound issues and such. But I personally think that this looks very sharp. And I'm very happy with the look and feel. And on the VirtualBox, it looks just as good as it did on my laptop that I actually installed it on the main hard drive. A couple of things about that installation though, I had a couple partitions that were Linux EXT partitions that for some reason when I tried to manually set some partitions for BSD, it f acted like it installed but failed every time. So I ended up just wiping the entire hard drive, trying out ZFS and allowing it to partition for me and going forward with that it worked beautifully in fact I truly feel ZFS seems to be a lot faster than I have seen other things work now while we look at a few things I want to bring up Firefox real quick 
and let's get rid of let's actually let's just go ahead and search on free BSD handbook because I want to discuss the handbook just a little bit you know, one of the hardest things for people when they're looking at stuff is knowing how to do it now FreeBSD I am very impressed with their handbook right here pretty much starting at the very beginning getting started learning about FreeBSD getting started with how to install it going through the live media now I took mine I took the uh, the USB stick version and put it on a USB stick that I was able to use instead of burning a CD or DVD but you have those options of, as well all of these are very good I mean it talks about how to set your resolutions with virtual consoles it then gives you some discussions about setting up shells text editors for instance I like to use bash because I'm a Linux user uh, text editor I am a keen person on nano I I'm rubbish at VI and then so forth it talks then going into the applications a few packages you might be interested in it discusses how you can use PKG or the ports now this is what I want to kind of talk about a little bit here using PKG for instance allows you to install FreeBSD via a bin based binary package using things like package install and the command like package install package name etc package install curl if you want to look to see what the package is about package info and when you don't want a package any longer package delete and package upgrade etc all of these things are wonderful tools if as an example here I was using the K user package earlier I don't need that any longer so I can go into here and go pkg uh, delete k user ask me if I want to delete it yes and then I also want to remove all those dependencies that I don't need so it's going to go through and say yeah you don't need all that stuff let's free it up very handy very easy to use I installed a lot of it in the virtual box using the PKG file system. Very good to go through. Now, if you want the other route using the ports directory, it's pretty nifty as well because you can use things like port snap to get the updates and also bring your ports to up to date. It's a lot like portage within the Emerge system in Gen 2. You can also use the version to check out and update your ports. And then from there, you can actually go into programs. Like you would change the directory into the sysutils lsof and do a make install and then run things from that. If we go back into the terminal, for instance, and we go into user ports and do an ls you will see all of these different items that are here now for instance say we wanted to go ahead and install hex chat we could go into irc hex chat and then what you'd want to do first is a sudo make config and that's going to check out your use flags and your different options now I don't want to really change anything but here but if you wanted to turn off one thing or turn on another you could once you're done you just go ahead and enter for OK and then you would tell it to do a sudo make install clean now the reason why you want to do the clean at the end is it will remove all of the temporary files that it creates now it has to pull in a few extra programs so it's bringing up those programs so we're just going to go ahead and take the defaults for gmake and it's going to go ahead and grab that if there are any other programs that it might need to install or to configure hex chat it's going to go ahead and bring up that little menu so you can look at the use flags and change or disable enable if you want 
and from here it will go ahead and install HexJot for you. Very nice, very easy, but if you don't have the time to go through and allow it to compile, then you could use the PKG method and just do sudo PKG install HexJot. A very neat way. And now we have HexJot available. And if I start it up real quick, there it goes. It starts up and it wants to set everything up. We're not going to bother with it, but it is there. Now one thing, I'm not very familiar with Mate. And I'm not sure if this is a bug in the way this is set up. But we've installed HexChat, but if we go here, all we see is Firefox web browser. Now if I go out of here, log out, log out, and start X again. I'm also getting some VirtualBox client initialization errors up here, and I've just been closing because it, everything else seems to be fine. Now if we go into internet, we'll see that we have hex chat and Firefox. Now I'm not a very big mate user, so I'm not sure if that's normal or if I just don't know what I'm doing. But let me tell you, I have been very impressed with BSD. A friend of mine down under was recently trying this out, and he had mentioned how when he was working with this, he asked me what my opinion was. and my honest opinion of BSD, and I haven't looked at it for quite a while, was that it felt like Linux about a decade behind its time. After saying that, I thought, it's been a while since I've glanced at it. Let's take a look and try to get a new opinion. And I'm glad I did, because I'm very impressed with the way FreeBSD has set itself up how the community is out there, it was very easy for me to find a lot of information on how to make simple things work, such as getting the webcam to work in its native environment on the other laptop. There are other issues with VirtualBox, of course, that cause those problems, and I'm not going to bother bashing it for that because it's not a BSD issue. Uh, some areas I did still run into problems with. I tried to install a, a USB thumb drive so I could copy some data more quickly back and forth. Now for some reason I couldn't get it to work, but I found a couple tutorials that allowed me to mount the USB drive. Now I'm able to mount it very easily afterwards. However, when I would try to copy a file to the USB drive, I would get errors. Now, I tried both as my user profile as well as root to see if that was an issue of per privileges and permissions, and it didn't seem to be. No matter what I did, I had a great deal of trouble, and I finally ended up giving up. However, it wasn't difficult at all to go ahead and set up one of the shares to my network drives and I was easily able then to copy stuff up to the network and back down to other computers that way. A little cumbersome, but it worked. You know, so there are things that are still, in my opinion, a little wonky. Uh, they could be fixed, and I'm sure they will be fixed. I am very impressed with the look, the feel, the fact that I didn't feel like I was left hanging at all when installing BSD, that all the instructions were very clear, they were good examples of how to make things work, and once I figured out what I was doing, now I've been messing around with it for about two, three days now on my other laptop, but I actually installed FreeBSD from the ground up within about an hour and a half, maybe less, it probably didn't take me that long. But I had my GUI up in no time flat. I had most things working, knowing what I was doing. I still, of course, referenced the handbook and was able to get things up and running so I could do a good video review for you guys. So give it a try. Yeah, if you run into trouble, there's always PC, BSD, and others that actually give you a GUI interface. This is going to start you out at the command line interface. But believe me, if you follow the handbook, you look through it, you will have no trouble at all installing FreeBSD and giving it a try. 
Now another note that I will make, when I first loaded it up, I did try to set it up with cinnamon instead of mate. And cinnamon crashed. I couldn't seem to get it to work. And yet, when I was playing around with different things, I tried it again and suddenly it did work. And it worked for about a half an hour and then I needed to reboot again. And when I rebooted, it started crashing. So I'm not sure if there is an issue with the cinnamon packages. But I did test on my laptop mate. I did test XFCE. I tested GNOME 3. And I think that's about it. I did install KDE, but I never got around to testing it and seeing how it worked. Now, because of all those different environments being installed, there were some weird issues with the applications menu. And you can kind of see what it does here, for instance, with the GNOME area and anything I have here with cheese or since we got rid of for instance the KDEK users it's now gone and if I was to uninstall cheese and for some reason character map has been brought in or pulled in from something you know those two things that would directory would delete as well all in all I felt very well polished with FreeBSD and they have come a long way there's still a few things that need to be looked at, but you know, I think you'll find your caveats with every Linux or BSD flavor that you look at. There are problems still, even in Gen 2, and Ubuntu has their problems, and well, you're just going to find things that you like and you dislike about just about everything. But I really give FreeBSD a good review here. I've been very happy with it. I'm not sure I'm ready to give up Gen 2 just yet to go to free BSD, but I am glad to see that it has come a long way. So if it's evening, and I, bought, I butchered that up, boy, it tells you, I have not done my intros and outros in a long time. <laughs> if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. I hope you like it these types of things do leave a comment if you'd like to see something in the future I'm always willing to take requests and actually I prefer requests so it kind of gives me an idea of which direction to go and have a great one bye guys <laughs>